Hello, my name is um, Dr. Karioki. I'm a pediatrician from um, Kenya. I'm going to have a talk um, today on tinea capitis. Um, and the first bit of uh, our talk is about the overview of the infection. Um, so when you talk about tinea infections, um, these are superficial um, dermatophyte infections of keratinized tissue, meaning that it, it's an infection. these are infections that affect skin and skin appendages. Um, the naming of the tinea infections actually depends on the location where the infection is found. So that if the infection is um, on the hair, then that is called tinea capitis. Um, if it's on the skin, depending on the part of the skin where it's found, it's, um, they have different names. So if it's in the groin and the perineum, then that's called tinea uh, cruris. If it's on the feet, that's tinea pedis. Um, tinea manuum is tinea infections of the hands. Tinea corporis is anywhere else on the body other than what's been listed before. And when you have um, tinea infections of the nail, then that is referred to as tinea unguium. Now, um, to narrow specifically to tinea capitis, what you have here is a superficial fungal infection of the hair shafts and the follicles. And obviously where you will find hair shaft and hair follicles is on the scalp. You could also find that on the eyebrows or on the eyelashes. And um, we already said that when you have infection of the groin and the perineum, that has a different name that is not denoted as tinea capitis. Now it is a very common um, superficial mycosis that occurs predominantly in children and it affects the dead layers of the skin and the skin appendages uh, with uh, reduced ability to invade viable tissues. Um, and interestingly, it's one of the water-related diseases according to the World Health Organization and this means that it's infec the infection and the spread of infection um, is related to poor hygiene and um, sometimes lack of water um, to wash clothes, to wash yourself. Um, and this is one of the reasons why it could be a public health concern. Tinea capitis is sometimes also referred to as um, ringworms of the scalp. Now, to talk a little bit about the etiology, what causes tinea capitis? Um, so the infection is caused by dermatophyte species and uh, what the word dermatophyte means is that um, derm refers to skin and phyte refers to plants. So these are fungal um, infections of the skin. It's fungi affecting the skin. Um, and dermatophytes are um, specialized to infect keratin only. So they will um, affect only keratinized tissues, hence why the infections will be found on the skin and the skin appendages. Now you have three genera that belong to this group of um, fungi called dermatophytes and one of them is the trichophyton, then you have the microsporum and then you have the epidermophyton. Now when you um, go a little bit further into finding out who are the causative species in these three groups, we find that in tinea capitis you have two of the genera uh, causing infections, the trichophyton and the microsporum. And you can see there are uh, many, many species that uh, cause tinea capitis. And the ones that are highlighted in bold, that's the Trichophyton sudanense, the Trichophyton tonsurans, Trichophyton uh, verucosum, Trichophyton rubrum, are some of the commonest in that group. Um, while in the uh, microsporum uh, group, you find microsporum canis is one of the most commonly found species causing um, tinea capitis. Now, the, the species can be classified according to the habitat. Um, so this is a classification based on where they are found. And when you do that, you find three main groups. Um, on the left hand side, you find the anthrophilic uh, uh, species. And these ones would be confined to humans. And they cause persistent inflammatory reactions, non-inflammatory reactions and they are a predominant cause of infection. So of the three groups, most of the species actually belong to the anthrophilic group. Um, then you have the zoophilic type, um, and here these species will have one or two, um, one or more animal hosts, um, and the spread is often from animal to human, and they will most uh, of the times cause pronounced inflammatory reactions. 
Then in the geophilic group, we have uh, the species that are found in soil, and these will be often found in decomposing keratin, so decomposing um, hair, decomposing nails, decomposing parts of the body that contain keratin um, um, is where they will be found, and from then they can be then transmitted to um, humans so as to cause infections. Now, if we look at a few of the species to find out um, where do they cause infections and in what uh, kind of habitat would you find them, I would like to highlight a few. And in the Microsporum uh, species, uh, we can talk a little bit about the Microsporus canis. And its main habitat is, the, its habitat is a cat or the dog. Um, and from then on, transmission will happen to the human. And where you will find the uh, infection is often the scalp, the face, the trunk, and the limbs. If you look at the Trichophyton group, we can look at the Trichophyton tonsurans, um, and the habitat is man, so this means it's an anthrophilic species, um, and the site of infection would be the scalp, the face, the trunk, the limbs, but for the purposes of these discussions, we are going to be talking about the scalp infections. So how do you transmit these organisms? So you will have a direct contact with the organism either from um, the humans, that's for the anthrophilic organisms, from other animals, for the zoophilic organisms, or from the soil, for the geophilic group. Or you can have the transmission occurring directly through formites, and these would be hats, um, hair brushes, um, um, hair accessories like clips or um, hair pins. Um, or hair dryers, um, such kind of um, um, innate objects that are coming into contact with the hair. Um, now, um, I'm hoping by the end of this talk that you'll be able to understand and describe the various, uh, the geographical variations of infection patterns of tinea. Yeah. Then understand why tinea capitis is a public health concern and be able to describe the populations that are at higher risk of tinea infections and why those populations are at risk. Um, so as a way of starting, tinea infections are really common and how the infections occur is either sporadic um, in outbreaks or you have it endemic in some areas, especially in the tropical regions. Now the prevalence of the different types of dermatophytes that cause tinea infections varies from continent and also varies from country to country so that it's very hard to pin down which exact dermatophyte is most common in a region. Now if we look at a few um, sampled regions here we can look at um, North Africa and the species that seems to be more prevalent in some parts of North Africa is the Trichophyton uh, violisium. In North America, you have the Trichophyton tonsurans. In the central and southern of Europe, you have the Microsporum canis. While in the sub-Saharan West Africa, you get the, Microspora, um, the Microsporum audonai and the Trichophyton sudanense. These are difficult names to pronounce. Now, if you narrow down to Africa where I am from, um, this graph actually shows no pattern. And that's the take-home message, um, that if you pick a um, specific organism, um, a, a specific um, species, for example, the type of phyton tonsurans, then you will find bits of it in Kenya and none of it in uh, Zimbabwe or Mozambique. Then you'll find it in Ivory Coast as the most common organism isolated. Um, if you go to the Violaceum, same thing, you find, you find some in Zimbabwe, you find none reported in Mozambique, you find none reported in Nigeria. And so really when you look at the specific um, uh, species that cause tinea capitis, there is no obvious geographical pattern that jumps out at you. Um, interestingly, over, over the years there's been a, changing, uh, a change in the distribution of the species depending on where you are. Um, and what has come out as most clear is that um, in the urban USA there is a rise in the trichophyton tonsurans and this is the same case happening in South America. While in parts of Europe, especially the in parts of Europe, you have the rising of Microsporum uh, canis. While in some areas of urban Eastern Europe, um, similar to what's happening in um, in the USA, is a rise in the Trichophyton 
tonsurans and this was different this is different from what had had been observed a couple of decades ago so why talk about tinea capitis why is it a public health concern um, so amongst the reasons why we are really concerned about this um, infection is that it is easily spread with high attack rates sometimes up to 40 percent of some species meaning that if you come into contact with um, someone who has um, tinea infection then you're likely to get the infection and you can imagine this in terms of schools or families or in places where children are in crowded areas um, then the second thing is that as we have seen in the previous slide you have a changing pathogen distribution worldwide so in some areas species that no, uh, didn't used to be seen are starting to be seen in higher numbers um, then, as we will see in a minute, uh, these infections are endemic in some tropical areas, especially in the low and the middle income countries. Um, and here we can see a few um, selected African countries uh, where you have rates as high as 33% in Kenya. Um, this is a study done in 2001 with a sample size of 68 children. Um, you look at um, uh, West Africa and from about four studies um, in Nigeria spanning about two decades, you have the prevalence ranging from 2.8% to 19.3%. Um, same to Botswana, where you have about 30% of um, 700 children uh, being found to have tinea infection. So you can see this is an endemic um, infection in, in some areas of low and middle income countries. Um, another reason why um, we are concerned about tinea capitis and why it's considered a public health concern is that there is increased incidence in areas that were previously thought to be effectively controlled. Um, so in areas where they had declared it not to be um, uh, such a, a, a big deal of a public health concern because they thought the infections were under control, like in urban USA, then you're starting to see an increase um, in the infection. Um, then the other thing is we are always worried about infections where transmission can occur when you are asymptomatic because they are hard to curb. Um, and the last one which we already talked about is an infection that's related to water because that points to a bigger problem. Um, so infections related to hygiene or uh, poor water supply, then that, that's, those are the areas um, that the public health um, authorities really want to concentrate and see um, what they can do about the infection and how to curb it. There are four groups of, um, of, of, of the population that are at higher risk of um, tinea capitis infection and we'll talk about each of them in a little bit of detail. So one is prepubertal children, then you have uh, patients with immunosuppression, then you have groups of uh, populations living in um, areas of poor hygiene or low social economic status. And the last one is women who are undergoing major hormonal changes. Now, why prepubertal children? Um, so it is thought that the prepubertal children have low sebum uh, production and that these decreased uh, fatty acids then end up increase, um, increasing the pH of the scalp. And what this does is that it causes colonization and subsequent infection by dermatophytes. Now, um, when you look at all the prepubertal children and the group of patients, uh, the group of children that uh, are highest risk of getting the tinea infections are the children between three years and seven years of age. And often you have boys getting the infection more than girls. Um, the next category are patients with immunosuppression, uh, populations with immunosuppression. And here what you have is that um, there is impaired hair shaft growth and strength. And so a weak hair strand is more likely to be colonized. And the, um, the, the conditions that lead to, immu to immunosuppression that then facilitates colonization with tinea, um, with dermatophytes causing tinea are diabetes mellitus, prolonged steroid use, cancer, um, immunos use of immunosuppressant drugs, and anemia. Interestingly, HIV is not one of those conditions. And this is thought um, it's because of competitive colonization of patients who have um, HIV with a different organism um, known as malasthesia. Women um, also form the other major category of, uh, of, of patients of 
of people who are at higher risk of tinea infections. And often these are women who are undergoing major hormonal changes, either pregnancy or menopause. And the reason is similar to that seen uh, with the categories of patients with immunosuppression where the hair shaft growth is altered. Therefore, you have a weaker strand that's more likely to be colonized. Now, for women who are outside of this group, that is the ones undergoing major hormonal changes, there have been thoughts of is the reason why they are getting the infection because they have prolonged contact with prepubertal children? Is it because they um, are uh, more likely to be in contact with formites um, that are infected because of frequent hairdresser visits? Um, really not sure why uh, women who are not undergoing uh, major hormonal changes also form a category of patients who are um, at higher risk of tinea infection. Poor hygiene, and I do not want to belabor this point, uh, but tinea infections are classified as water-related diseases by the World Health Organization, meaning um, that patients who are getting tinea infection, uh, there is often a relation to insufficient clean water to wash the body or clothes. And of course, we know that low social economic status and poverty ends up compounding that. So in summary, tinea capitis, um, causative organisms keep varying from one place to the next with no obvious geographical pattern. Um, two, tinea capitis infections are a public health concern and that specific categories of the population, including the prepubertal children and the immunosuppressed, are at higher risk of getting the infection. Thank you very much. Where is my clap? <laughs>